Here we are once again on the Transylvania map. This time we're going to be doing much like what we did last week and we're going to be developing a guide of sorts. The first thing that we're going to be doing is developing a viable loadout for this map and when I say viable again I just want to preface this and say that what I'm talking about is a weapon that can take out almost any animal on this map and not just one of course we're going to need two weapons to cover the entire tier list. And we're not only going to be talking about weapons, we are going to be talking about the collars. And in this video, I think the collars are more important for Transylvania than any other map. After that, we're actually going to break down the map into three different types of categories that I established last video. We're going to be doing a hot spot. We're going to be doing a mid spot, kind of a spot just where you can get into a decent hunt that might be a little harder than a hot spot hunt or might not have as many species. And then we're also going to be looking at kind of the dead zones of the map. Just kind of areas to stay away from if you're a new hunter. Because it might actually interfere with you having a good time. Then the last thing we're going to get into is my personal rating of the map. And when I say personal, I mean what I'm thinking, not exactly what I think of the map. And in my honest opinion, this is one of my favorite maps to hunt. And we'll get into that a little bit more later. I'm sure a few of you are going to be getting annoyed with me at this point with how much I bring this weapon up, but we're going to go ahead and jump right into the loadout and we're going to start off with the 270. I know, I know, I talk about this weapon all the time, but when you have such a viable weapon that can take out anything from tier 4 all the way up to tier 6 with a hunter star rating of 5, you gotta give it a good nod. Something I want to touch on very quickly with this is that you know there's always a different type of play style so if you want to drop a creature like the bison you might want to go ahead and run a tier 6 rifle that way you don't have to track it as long same thing with the elk if you don't want to be tracking an elk or a moose that long you might want to go ahead and step it up you don't have to think about your shot placement you can just put it broadside into a lung and then let it go and know that you're going to be able to get it down there's not a whole lot of you know patience and not like I'm not saying you have to have skill, but you just don't have to have patience to line up that shot. You can just take the shot, right? In those situations where you do want to run a higher powered rifle, just be aware that you're going to have to run a secondary rifle to get to those lower tier species like the fallow and the roe. And you know, that's totally fine. You can grab a 223, double rifle it all across the mountain, and be just fine taking out every tier of animal. So always think about the type of hunt that you are going on and consider that when you are building this loadout. The other rifle that I would use as a primary rifle would probably be the 308. I really like that rifle as well. It's very viable through the tier 5 and tier 6 list. And then you just throw on a secondary to get to the 1 and 3 tier and you're set. Looking at the secondary weapon, you can throw on the 223 like I mentioned before. My preference is the Buffton Crossbow. The crossbow is just so viable through all the tier lists. You can get anything from a duck all the way up to a bison. If you can place it between the 6th and 7th rib, it looks like there is a pretty wide gap there. So just put it right behind that elbow and you're pretty much going to hit that spot. The glass for this build really hasn't changed. We're going to use the Overguard Long Range 3 to 15 by 50. I just really cannot use the Leupold VX 6HD because of how thick the reticle is. I'm hoping they get a rework going with that because it would really help out with some long range shots if that scope was more viable. I don't even feel like the binos are worth mentioning. You know what we're going to be using, so let's go ahead and jump right into the collars. Now, for Transylvania, the collars really matter because of how the map is built, and if you've ever played the map, you will understand what I mean. There's a lot of rolling hills, so you can find yourself calling to something that's over a hill, and even though it's 150 meters, you are not going to be able to creep in on it, so a call is your only option. The first caller we're going to be using is a staple. It's the predator call. We're going to be using that to really get any type of predator to respond. That's the gray wolves, the foxes, the badgers, I believe, and the bears. Any type of predator at all. If you want it to respond, you're going to need the key ye call. The next two caller slots I really use to be interchangeable because of the hunt that I'm choosing to do. You can go ahead and throw in a roe deer call if you're going to be in the population of roe deer. You can throw on the deer grunt collar to get a hold of some fallow or you can swap either one of these out for the red deer call. 
you won't find a huge discrepancy along the map as far as deer species go and population diversity but there are some places where there's more roe deer or fallow deer than red deer so you're really going to want to build this out to whatever area of the map you're headed now that's not the only call you can add because you can also add the boar grunt too that gives us about five different colors that we can use to attract individual species so building this out is gonna take a little bit of foresight you can see why I say that when we look at the map because there are just so many hills and mountains and little crevasses that you have to navigate that makes this hunt that much more difficult looking at the map now we are going to go ahead and get into some of the hot spot areas that i really like to hunt and i wanted to share them with you this may not be a full and complete list as i am still new to the map so if you have something that you want to share go ahead and leave a comment down below and it'll greatly help out the community but let's get into it the first spot i want to go ahead and mention is aurora woods that place is really good because it is a private reserve and you will have better hunting on private reserves as far as the animal genetics they're going to be higher in these locations so this map has a lot more than aurora shores did where it just had the one rainforest on the island here we actually have, let's see, we have four, and you're going to need to be careful because at least two of the spots that I'm mentioning now are going to fall on private reserves, so you're going to want to purchase those as quickly as possible to get into some good hunting. If you go to that campsite at the far east over there by the empty cave, and then either go north or south along that river valley, you are going to run into a bunch of critters. More so south just because you do have a couple tier 3 all the way up to tier 6 animals. So that's going to be my first hot spot. You start at that little tent there and you work your way all the way down to the other tent locations. Either one towards the south and you will have a spectacular hunt. Just take your time, take your calls and be patient. The next hot spot I want to mention is going to be a massive one because this map is so big I do want to go ahead and increase the size of these hot spots we're going to be looking at to almost two miles and this one really shows it off because it is I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right but it's Lelele Field and Porte Ur I think that's what they are pronounced as and these two river valleys right between these two areas are huge you can go to any one of these tents right here along these major river valleys and have a spectacular hunt I pulled two five stars out of these red deer up here and I actually have a mark still because that's the highest genetic herd that I have on this map. The other thing that's really nice about this spot is there's not a cabin that far away. It's to the northeast and when you get up there as well it's a great hunt. This entire area is just loaded with critters all the way down from the cabin to the main river valley and then these two smaller river valleys they're just packed full of critters in all different sizes the next spot i figured we would go ahead and head to is alb gutter there is so much in this region it is wild you can go to any one of these tent locations and head south that's gonna be the biggest hunt really but if you go north as well up to the northern side of that that's going to be my fourth hot spot location because there's just so much going on around that lake as well. You hit that, that little tent and you can just pretty much hunt east to west and there's going to be a lot of different critters popping up all along the way. For the fifth one, I want to head up to the Merrill Barren region. There's a lot of critters up in this area. And if you head to that campsite and go south or north, you're going to get into a bunch of different stuff to hunt. And they're really just packed in here. I haven't ever went over here and never ran into anything. So I feel like this one's a really good spot to hunt as well. This next one is going to be quite large. So we're going to split it up into two different sections. We're going to call it six and seven. Number six is going to be at this main cabin just to the north of the Meadows of the Fluture. Um, it's just loaded with critters over here. You can get pretty much red deer all the way down to rabbits and you know, jackal and fox. You're not going to get a whole lot of red deer, but you can get boars as well. So I feel like this spot is just popping off anytime I go in there. The pheasants are always hollering, so no matter what, you're going to see something. Then for the 7th, we're going to go to the very southern campsite in the meadows of the Fluture. 
and then you can pretty much go anywhere. This place is crazy good. It's wide open. There are rolling hills, so most of your shots are going to be taken under 200 meters. But this spot is just amazing. I mean, it's not really going to have a whole lot of high genetic animals. But if you want to get into something really quick, you got 30 minutes, this is the spot to go on this map, hands down. Now, I didn't leave out the northeast side of the map because I have some type of prejudice. It's just if you look over there, you're really not going to get into too much other than Shammy and Mufon. You'll have some gray wolves, you know, scattered here and there. But you're really not going to get into much on those, you know, almost those three northeastern quadrants. It's just not going to be a whole lot of good hunting in my opinion. You want to go up there and have some long shots on those critters? Good news. That's going to be our first mid spot. Go up there and have your fun. Cause it is fun. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot of fun up there. It's just not going to be jam-packed full of the species that I'm talking about throughout the entire map. So head over to the Regina Mountains on the north side. That is a great place to hunt. Um, even just the Regina Mountains campsite, that place is amazing. Sometimes I'll pop in there and I'll actually have Shammy on my campsite. The next one I'm going to go ahead and say is going to be Umbar Tara. I don't know if that Umbra Tara. I think that's how it's pronounced better. Um, this spot is awesome. I have some really good Mouflon herds in here. There are some badgers and some um, bears. So you do get a good spread throughout the tier list. It's just not as loaded as you know other areas could be. So that's why I kind of leave this one on the mid spot as well. You know, it's just not it's just not that great of a hunt. It's really thick, so it's harder. Uh, you know, the trees are really tight in there, and it's just you know a more difficult hunt in my opinion. The next mid spot I will go ahead and mention is going to be the Linistit Grounds up in the northeast side of that it's really awesome over there there's going to be a lot of different animals this is going to be a little harder of a hunt in my opinion so you're going to have to have some patience when you're running through there but you will be able to get into some critters so that's going to be a nice mid spot to take on for our last mid spot we're going to go ahead and look at these swamps down here in the south of our main cabin and the firing range you know this is just going to be a good spot to get any of your geese and your ducks your hogs I have a lot of fun down here. You'll even get a couple fallows and some rows. The reason I mention this is just because it's always popping off. You can run down here with a shotgun and have some fun pretty quick, especially at this campsite to the east. Now for the more important bits, all these dead zones that, well, the trudge that I do not like to take. The first one is going to be the most southern side of Meadows of the Fluture. That place is so thick, it's not worth it. I just wouldn't hunt it. There's not going to be high genetic animals in there. So personally, I just don't even go through there. I barely even ran through there this morning just to kind of hunt these foxes that I've been after for the last day. The next one I want to mention is the north side of Aurora Woods and the southern side of Piatra Mica. Those places are pretty much just dead. There's not a whole lot in there up to that viewpoint and even over that viewpoint south, southeast. There's just not a whole lot. You're not going to get into much. So going through there, just, you know, carry your patience with you. The next one I definitely got to mention is between the Dorn Apex and Umbra Tara. That place is also just dead. Lots of hiking. So if you want to take a nice hike and get some views, that's the place to do it because it's amazing up there. But you're not going to get into the hunt of your life. Then you have some pretty sparse hunting between Aurora Woods and Alb Gutter right there at Lalela Fields, the southern part of that. That's just dead. There's nothing in there. I mean, I had the hardest time even walking through that area. And then the last place I'll mention is going to be north of the Corb Myanmar Plain and east of Cota de Volpa. That is just dead over there. There's mainly just hares and pheasants and roe deers. You might get into some red deer, but again, it's not going to be the hunt of your life. It's pretty sparse with trees, so you might have some fun in that sense. But as far as the animal density goes, it's just not that great over there. You're going to do a lot of hiking. I think something that's very important to mention with this map is you're going to be doing a lot of hiking no matter where you go. As the hot spots are pretty tight and all the dead zones are in between that so you're gonna have some hiking in between hunts I mean things are spread out you know pretty good between 600 meters when they aren't in their you know hot spots so 
Just consider that when you are hunting this map. Now for the map breakdown and map rating. The Aurora Shores has a lot of things going for it as it's small. It has a lot of species. And then it also has a lot of parking spots and tent sites. That you don't have so much with Transylvania and Nez Perce. The cabins are the only places you can swap out your weapon unless you are taking your vehicle and the vehicle spots are really spread out throughout this map. So while there may be 20 plus campsites and areas to sleep, there's only about 5 spots you can recall your vehicle which would make it pretty hard to get around to these areas in a good amount of time. I think that being able to recall your vehicle quicker and then get out to your hunt is a lot easier in Aurora Shores than it is with this map. The next thing I'll mention is there's not a lot of plains here. There's not a lot of valleys that you can just see for hundreds and hundreds of meters. So you're not getting a lot of those long shots that you could with Aurora Shores and Nez Perce. There's just so much. I mean, you go to the northern side and you might have an easier time. But on the southern side and pretty much anywhere else, there's so many hills and mountains that it's just not ideal. With that tidbit, I feel like a lot of new hunters will have a hard time with this map. So going ahead and rating the map, I'm going to say this is probably going to be the third best map that Way of the Hunter has right now. This is not my personal opinion. This is my favorite map to hunt, hands down. The rest of them are pretty easy to hunt in my opinion. So that's why I'm choosing this one as my personal favorite, but for the game and for the community as a new player base, I'm going to say this is probably going to be one of the last maps they're going to check out. Our next video, we are going to be covering Nez Perce, and if you have any input, just hit me up in the Discord and let me know where you like to hunt, and I will definitely take that into consideration when I'm lining out all these hot spots and dead zones. Be on the lookout for that video in the coming future, and any coverage of Tika Moon Plains that we might find ourselves in. I sure hope everyone's having a good weekend, and as always, have a good day.